Band. Brought to you by NZ on Air. The active life. Yeah. Kia ora, active Fano, and welcome to Active Live. My name is Tasha, and we have Miles Calder and Band in studio with us. Kia welcome. Kia How are you all going today? Great. Yeah, feeling good. Yeah, feeling very set up. No, yeah, we. Everybody looks great and all set up. There's double synth. Yeah. So, yes, that there. So if you are tuned in, if you're going to tune into the live stream video, you'll be able to see all of the uh, sick equipment already set up. Uh, congratulations on the autopilot life tour. How are you feeling ahead of the last stop at Meow next Friday? Feeling really great. Yeah, yeah it's like the hometown mm. homecoming show of the tour, and a really fun time um, taking these songs around the country mm. and. Had just awesome response, like curveball biggest responses, and arguably the most like, regional little venues. Oh yeah, like in Palmerston North and Blenheim and stuff like that. I so was I was going to ask about how the uh, performances throughout the tour have been with it coming to um, an end next Friday. Like, have there been any standout moments that you guys um, have? We ended up opening for Tiny Ruins in oh. Littleton, which was we just both had the same date, and we're like, hey. We're Let's do it. Open for you guys. <laughs> so, and that was a um, really fun show with like an awesome crew in the mm. crowd of, um, yeah, local Ooh, alum, yeah. alumni. Ooh. Notable alumni. Nice having the local legends. Yeah, local legends. There. Uh, have you guys got anything special in store for the uh, Wellington hometown audiences? Or will they have to go oh and check? Um, we've, we're playing a, um, a couple of brand new songs. So Ooh. we're basically playing... Almost all the album, mm. new album, but then we are playing a couple of new singles at the gig, um, which has been fun, sort of road road testing those. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go in and record them within the next like month or two. Oh, sweet. How's the response been to the new stuff? Really good, I think. Yeah. A couple of little bangers. and mm? Yeah, they're, they're super fun to play, and especially when a song's less set and you can kind of feel it out mm. over, over, you know, several gigs. Yeah. Yeah. Trial and error, almost. A little bit. Yeah, little bit. <laughs> um, should we get into the first track? For sure. Sweet. All right. What one is it? This is Take Me Back to How It Was. Nice.
Take Me Back to How It Was by Miles Calder. Wow, that was so cool to hear it live. I was listening to it this morning on the way to work kind of thing, but that is a, this is a whole nother experience. It just kind of hits you in the face, but like in the best way. Kicking it up a notch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thank you. That, yeah really, really cool. Um, so how has the change to a more kind of swirly psychedelic sound uh, changed your initial creative processes, whether it be like songwriting or just hmm. thinking about the album? I think this album, like a lot of the songwriting stayed pretty, um, or started pretty basic, like acoustic guitar or piano. Um, although it was like some of the first piano stuff that I'd done. How was like, that? Uh, awesome. Like cracks up in a bunch of new chord progressions or like you know super linear things that go up, up and down a keyboard rather than guitar shapes that you're stuck in right um, yeah like that but i think it was more in the yeah like okay we've got this basic song like that one is just strumming along on an acoustic guitar but um how to dress it up um recording it and we sort of recorded in in layers you know mm. but um i guess there was a lot of like touchstones of music we liked where that kind of thing like it qu pretty quickly that sort of sound you know all the electric stuff and um on the recording all the kind of swirly creepy background things i didn't even know what chris did on that one but yeah he doesn't remember sounds great anyway but yeah so. uh, that stuff um i don't know just adding an extra atmosphere mm. was definitely something that pretty quick into making it we're like definitely want this oh and this and this yeah. so how did the band form and what's um i guess the typical way you'll make a song is it someone brings an idea and you all layer it on together as a group or is it kind of someone's got the idea and you're going with it well i think like so steve on bass and nick on drums and maybe been playing together for like i think almost 10 years with um, so wow. for a while we did um, Miles Calder and the Rumors mm. as a group, which was definitely more I don't know like quite classic folk Americana mm. sound, um, and that's kind of where my st songwriting started. Um, and it's always that, and and this kind of new chapter has always been. I pretty much have a finished song, but then we'll start jamming it together, and you know some sections might move around a little, or we come up with um, some new arrangement bits and um yeah so it, it, usually what i bring is something that could be played on a single instrument mm. um although i find more and more like in my head there's often way more than that going on nowadays i think before yeah but um yeah and, and then J uh dale and chris i don't know we just you guys have been playing with us for like four years now three years or something and yeah it's just it's it's awesome feeling it's good yeah, we, we've been living with these songs for longer than like this album came out in march but we've been playing these for probably a couple of years now mm. just not as outward, outwardly too much yeah. and not all around yeah with autopilot as the um title of the album and one of the tracks on the album as well mm. where did that name come from because that's that's quite an isolating but an interesting concept like autopilot life yeah i mean it's I think, like, I found almost after the fact of writing heaps of songs, I found it was um, a theme that kept cropping up was kind of waking up from your day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, going through the motions and that sort of thing. So the title is pretty, like, almost literal, you know. Yeah, um, just an autopilot kind of life. speaks for itself, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, I reckon it's something that's pretty universal and especially more and more, like, we get so lost in... We, don't, we not only have day-to-day -day lives in the flesh to deal with, but we've got our, like, digital day-to-day -day mm -hmm. lives and getting lost in your screens and phones and distraction all the time. And I reckon that just felt like a good central point um, for all the songs. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. That's really interesting. Yeah, tech often does become quite, like, pivotal in Groundhog Day as well because you spend so much time scrolling and... It kind of sucks up your time as well, so mm. it's, like, bedtime before you know it. Yeah. And then bedtime includes not going to sleep yeah. on your phone. And then it's like midnight yeah. and then you've got to wake up and then you go, I can't. But Absolutely. what we can do, next track? Yeah, cool. Amazing. What okay. is this one uh, um, called? Could we play a bit of an album track called Greener Grass? Cool. I wonder if I can wander much. <laughs> Thank you. 
think I've got an addiction Gonna sell all my fun A cathartic release of care Can only serve you for so long It's all the same
huge. That was Greener Grass yeah. by Miles Court. Wow, that was so good. That's uh, Dale Jellyman on the synth. Everybody. Yes, that was a whole sonic journey within itself. Um, uh, we have got a couple more questions before our yeah, yeah. last song. Um, wow, just again going from that performance, like what musical styles do you all draw from that you bring to like your own playing style, I guess? Um, we have probably have a healthy little spread of mm. Venn diagram <laughs> of our... If I can bring it back to the Venn, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, like... I can speak to my own listening taste is, you know, I listen to a lot of, like, 60s, 70s mm -hmm. psychedelic rock stuff, um, which allows for some jams, you know, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, some keep some extended outros and things like that. I yeah. love that. Um, and obviously, like, heaps of more modern, like, uh, indie folk artists, you know, um, like Kevin Morby and, and those that kind of scene. All of that. Um so I guess it's for me it's kind of a marriage between that, but like these, I don't know. Dale plays in like twenty five bands, um, of all different. You were here this morning, right? <laughs> playing. Yeah. Were you with the Balkan band? Yeah, playing Balkan mu uh, we folk had music. <laughs> listeners, if you don't know, we had a uh, Nico Niz Na Zna, I think. Yeah. Um, in this morning for Balkan Brass, and they had everybody dancing. So that's incredible. Yeah, I mean. That, I mean, that was seems to be a bit of a coincidence. Yeah. Well, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the dancing or the <laughs> fact that you were in here? No, they're coming in twice in one day. I, oh, yeah. No, uh, fair enough. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. A lot of the, uh, kind of different backgrounds, but we share enough that like, this project is um, uh, everyone's in and, and kind of finding common ground. But um, it's kind of a beautiful space where, say, if we've got a new song and I kind of try to first let anyone um, come up with their ideas first mm. before I go, actually, I already had this. Yeah. Um, because there's heaps of gold in there. Um, like that tune, Greeny Grass, on the album, some of the synth stuff at the end, Dale, I think, was just like s sound checking his synth in the recording studio and some of that stayed in. <gasps> you know, like, so yeah. there's heaps of um, happy accidents or like tri yeah, trial things on guitar or um, stuff with, with you, Chris, I think. Yeah, yeah, true. But some of the earlier stuff kept, but I don't know. Yeah. All of it. It's definitely, I think it trains, like, just from sitting here, um, how long you guys actually have been playing together because like, that was just so tight and so full of energy, um, I think. Yeah, it's just amazing. Thanks. Um, Thanks. So where can our listeners keep up to date with what you guys are up to? And um, um, Well, I've somehow, it's all under my name, Miles Calder. So, like, all the... You know, Instagram um, for updates and things like that, or website. I've got a mailing list, which is kind of good because you don't have to deal with the algorithms. True. And um, or and the music's the new albums everywhere, like Spotify, um, and good record stores. Um, yeah, we have vinyl out and CDs, mm -hmm. and you can or order that straight from us because it's great. It's actually isn't it Bandcamp Friday? I think. I today? Think it's Bandcamp Friday today. Well, they actually have a website called Is It Bandcamp Friday? But yeah, well, <laughs> check that and then we get a great amount of proceeds. Then, yeah. So um, if it is Bandcamp Friday. Which helps us pay for all this gear. Exactly. Which you will be able to see in live recorded video. Um, we, uh, I'd like to say thank you to New Zealand On Air. Thank you, New Zealand uh, On New Air. New Zealand On Air. What is the track you guys are going to take us out with? Bad for me? Nice, and then it'll be over to Bean Dreams. <laughs> no. All right, bad for me. Bad for me. This is bad for me.
songs like eight minutes long. Consider yourself a night out. <laughs> That's all good. That was so good though. Thank you. That was so much fun. Late. Experience the finest art and culture under the cloak of darkness. Open until 10pm with food and drink for sale. Tuatara open late.